Okay, so here's a few questions from your assignment if you uh, want to watch this, if you need a little bit of help here. Uh, number three, I'll start with number three. It says solve each radical equation. That's what 5.3 is all about. Verify your solution. So that means check and identify any extraneous roots. And that means any roots that would possibly compromise uh, or, or uh, any roots that would cause a, a negative situation underneath the radical sign or a zero in the denominator. Those would be answers or roots that we would have to reject. So for A, uh, I'm going to do this. Um, we know that if we have a root 2x and we have everything on its own, uh, the radical all by itself, then the process here is to get rid of this root sign to liberate the x, where we want to solve for x, by squaring, and we can square both sides. So that gives us, well, if you square a square root, they are eliminated. They eliminate each other, so we have just 2x equals 3 squared is 9. And x equals now 9 over 2. So um, let's see, 9 over 2. So let's check that. So verify means we need to check. And so if we do the square root of 2 times 9 over 2 equals 3, that's square root of, well, 2 times 9 over 2, that just gives us root 9. And does root 9 equal 3? Yeah, it does. So there's 2a. Uh, and again, that's how, you, uh, that's how you do that question. So if we look at, uh, let's look at C here, okay? B is very much the same as A. But let's look at C because what we have is we have a binomial underneath the radical sign. That's no problem. Again, the radical is isolated here on the right side. So now I can go ahead and I can square both sides. You can always square both sides as long as you square the entire side. Don't ever square individual terms on a side, okay? You have to square the entire uh, side, and I'll show you in a later question what that means. So I get 49 equals, the, um, the square root is gone, so I just have 5 minus 2x. Okay, those cancel each other out. And now I just go ahead, like you normally would, in grade 8 or 9, uh, just solve for x. And so I'm going to, um, well, I'm going to move this 5 over. Why don't we do that? So this is going to be a 44 equals negative 2x. x equals, by divide both sides by negative 2, it's going to be negative 22. I should check that, and so 7 should equal the square root of 5 minus 2 times negative 22. 7 equals the square root of 5 plus, this is 44. Uh, so 7 equals the square root of 49, that is correct. So here are your two answers, right here and right here for A and for C. Number 3. Uh, anybody have any questions about that? Oh. Someone's phoning in with a question, looks like. Hang on. Yes, that phone call was actually not about question number three, believe it or not. Okay, so let's take a look at number four. Solve each radical equation. Okay. You guys okay over there? Yeah? So in A, I would encourage you to isolate the radical first. And so you, you don't have to, but if you want to square uh, and do a binomial, you know, square, that's one thing. But I think this is easier. When you square this and then you square this because 13 minus 8 can be simplified. So this is just going to be z, yeah? And it's going to be 5 squared. So z equals 25. Did you have a question? Okay. All right, somebody asked about number 5 here in the solution. To k plus 4 equals the square root of negative 2k. Now, notice that you do see a negative underneath the root sign, but k, if k was negative as well, then we'd be okay. We'd be all right. So um, it's, not, it's not a bad situation to, uh, automatically to have a negative under there. If there's a radical under there, there would be possible values that would make this uh, positive. So that's okay. So identify whether either of these values, k equals negative 8 or k equals negative 2, is extraneous. Explain your reasoning. So extraneous would be solutions that are not really solutions. So we have to check. And basically you want to check by inserting each value into the original equation to see. So let's, let's check k equals negative 8. Uh, that would be negative 8 plus 4 equals the square root of negative 2 times negative 8. So negative 8 plus 4 is actually negative 4. 
the square root of positive 16. Okay. Now, when we're when we're checking when we're checking these, okay, um, in the question, if you have a square root in the question, the the only possible answer is the principal square root. So if you have to take the square root of a negative number, bad. If the result of a square root that's already in the equation is negative, like this situation, then this is not the same. So you would, this would be negative 4. This would be understood to be positive 4. Because again, that radical is already in the equation. So this one, k equals negative 8, appears to be extraneous. Now I know that's a little bit different um, when you take the square root of a number in the process of solving an equation, then you have to consider both the positive and negative, and, and, I, and I get that. But if the, if the root sign is already in the equation, then the, uh, the result of this is understood to be the principal square root. So this would actually be, you'd only consider the positive value, okay? Because even if you said, oh, well, square root of 16 is plus or minus 4, then, then which one is correct then? Because then you would have this. So is it right or is it wrong? <laughs> you know what I mean? So is this root okay or not, right? So you wouldn't know. I mean, yes, yes down here, but no up here. So when you're checking, you, you consider only the principal square root. So k uh, equals negative 8, I believe, should be extraneous. All right, so that, that does check out. K, k equals negative 8 is extraneous. Also, if you put in uh, k equals negative 2, what's negative 2? Well, negative 2 plus 4 equals... Uh, the square root of negative 2 times negative 2. So this would be positive 2 over here, and this would be the square root of positive 4. So 2 equals 2 does check out, so k equals negative 2 is okay. All right, so that's an example where you would need to check your solutions, and uh, even though they both look like, hey, this, this is probably okay, both of these are probably okay, um, you would uh, be able to determine one is extraneous. And again, extraneous means it's extra, it's outside of uh, allowable uh, solutions. Okay, now someone else asked about number what? Eight? Yeah. You still want me to, to take a look at number eight? Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna go and grab that. Okay, so here's 8a, let's see what this looks like. So again, uh, a good idea to get the radical all by itself before you start squaring things. This is going to be a little bit easier. Uh, so this is going to be root 3x minus 5 equals x minus 5 on the other side. Now if we square root both sides, um, I'm going to have to square uh, this binomial. It's no problem. This is going to be just 3x minus 5. And this is going to be x squared, when you do the FOIL out there, minus 10x plus 25. So uh, it, it looks like x is going to be in several different terms. We can gather like terms, but we're going to have to solve this as a quadratic. So uh, let's bring the 3x to the other side. So that's going to be negative 13x's on this side. And let's bring the 5 over. So I'm going to add 5. That's going to be plus 30 over here. So uh, we can factor this. We can graph, graph it and find the intercepts. We can uh, complete the square. But probably factoring is going to be the best because I think I can think of um, two factors that multiply to 30 and add to negative 13. So we're going to have x here, x here. It's going to be negative 10 and negative 3 looks like. Okay, factored. So our possible values would be positive 10 and positive 3. I will need to check those to make sure that I don't include any extraneous roots by accident. So 5 plus, let's check the 10 first. Uh, 3 times 10 plus 5 or minus 5, that's right, minus 5 equals, uh, and x is 10. So this is 5 plus, 30 minus 5 is tw positive 25, so square root of 25 is 5. So that looks to be true. So it looks like x equals 10 is okay. Uh, let's try uh, x equals 3. So 5 plus uh, 3 times 3 minus 5. Uh, equals uh, 3. So 5 plus 3 times 3 is 9 minus 5 is 4. Root 4 equals 3. And you can see that this is not going to work. Yeah, that's going to be a 7. Uh, it does not equal 3. So uh, we have to reject the answer of x equals 3. Does that clear that up for you? Okay. Good. All right. Um, 
Okay, well, here's 10. Here's one with two radicals. I'll probably just end off this little section here by doing uh, one or two from number 10. Uh, and then if you, you want to go back to number 8, uh, we can do that. Uh, let's do 10a. Uh, so 10a, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides right away. I'm going to square both sides right away. And that's totally fine to do. If I square this side, I get z plus 5 equals 2z minus 1. Uh, let's gather some like terms. Uh, I'm going to take this over there. And I'm going to take this over there. So that's going to be uh, 1z equals 6. z equals 6. Let's check that. The square root of 6 plus 5 equals the square root of 2 times 6 minus 1. Root 11 equals root, let's see, that's 12 minus 1, root 11. Okay, it looks okay. Z equals 6, all right? Now, if you do the same thing for B, you, you realize that you're going to have a Y squared and a Y term, so you're going to have to, you're going to have a quadratic, you have to solve it that way. Okay, so there's just some uh, samples, questions from your, uh, from your homework assignment. If you have any others, uh, you can let me know. Oh, I, d I didn't do six. Let's do, s let's do six here. I'll do one from six. Let's do B. Uh, so if we have this, and don't worry about this. Uh, this just uh, is basically saying that X is restricted because of the nature here. So that's okay. Don't worry about that. It's not part of your solution um, or how you do this. Uh, let's isolate the radical at least somewhat. Uh, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the 17 over to the left and I'm going to take this. Now remember, this is one whole term here. So I'm going to take that whole thing over to the right and make it positive for number 6. So 17, um, 17 and 7 here, negative 24 equals 4 root 2x minus 1. Okay. Well, divide by 4, divide by 4. Do you know what, do you know what you're going to see right away here? Okay. So what you're going to see is that you have a root, a root equaling a negative number. So you're going, you're going to get an extraneous. This is not going to work because right here is your red flag. Uh, square root equaling a negative number. Remember, in the question, these radicals, the solution should be the principal square root. It shouldn't be negative. But if you didn't see that and you kept going all the way through, let's just let's keep going with this. Um, so if I square both sides, I get, you know, square both sides. I get 36 equals 2x minus 1. And um, I get so that's a plus 1, so 37 equals 2x. x equals 37 over 2. Is that right? 36. Okay, so we do have some we do have some issues here. Uh, you could plug this in and um, let's just see what this looks like. So negative 7 minus 4 times the square root of 2 times 37 over 2 minus 1 equals 17. So negative 7 minus, so these twos cancel out. That's 37 minus 1 is 36. Negative 7 minus, root 36 is 6. So 4 times 6 is 24. So we've got problems all over the place here, right? Uh, 24 was, uh, negative 31 does not equal 17. So we got issues. So back here, as soon as you have a square root equaling a negative number, that's when you know you've got problems and there's no solution. Okay? So this means that there's no solution. And you can carry it through to make sure, uh, but if you recognize that, you can pretty much stop right there. Okay? All right, so there's some samples from your homework for 5.5. 5.3, radical equations.